You need to challenge your CTO and say, look, you just went out there and spent all this money on this best of the breed application. And I undoubtedly, it's the best that's out there in the industry. The same goes for uh, on the tech side. If you don't have multiple streams, you have to charge a certain price to maintain that. If you had more, you could probably charge a little bit less. Only selectively integrating for what you're looking for, but now we were talking about AI. So what's gonna happen with that AI? Welcome to our next podcast. Uh, today, we're gonna to talk about all-in-one platforms, uh, their impact versus uh, best in breed. So we're gonna compare the two together and uh, a lot of companies are going through like these best of breeds. Some are going through these all-in-one platforms and we wanna have a conversation around them and see what are the advantages and disadvantages, the pros and cons of each platform. Uh, today we have Kendall Ware, the former president of uh, Cinnabon and Carvel. He's been running about 2,200 locations, two and a half billion dollar P&L statement and uh, among many other different uh, industries and brands, uh, I believe six different brands all together. So, uh, he knows this stuff firsthand because he's had to deal with those multiple vendors, having 10, 10 12, 15 different vendors to run and operate these uh, restaurants and the businesses that he's been in. So, uh, Kendall, let's start uh, kind of drilling down into that. Uh, tell me what you had done before at the smaller chains. I know you were at, um, well, let's not go back, I guess, to the oldest days, but maybe start with like Orange Leaf. Tell me what you guys were doing there and what, was, what did that look like? What did the tech stack look like? How many different applications did you have? <laughs> and also, what I'm personally, I want to know how you manage onboarding. Yeah. So I would say it was always the most challenging aspect, especially you know in that specific time, which you could probably argue that every time now there's always new technology happening you have to adapt to. But in that time specifically, a lot was coming out. Third party delivery, right? There was more mobile apps and different loyalty programs. A lot of things were happening more sophistication was coming to the industry when it came to restaurants. And I remember you would have one vendor, right? Like your POS vendor. And like, great, got this solidified, we're moving. Okay, but now we need this, right? We need a, you know, management platform, or we need to integrate with certain, um, you know, software companies that are out there. Okay, we gotta pay for this one, we gotta pay for that one. But before you know it, you start getting all the things that you need to manage your business and grow your restaurants. Um, and that are gonna help your franchisees become more profitable. And you're doing all the right things, but you pause and you realize, wow, I just set up 10 different relationships, all with these different you know, companies, and now I have to interact with all of them separately, and I'm trying to bring it all together. In one case, we actually spent several hundreds of thousands of dollars building our own platform that would just be the integrator of everything else. God's right, because we wanted to have something that could do that, and it didn't exist. It included things like e-learning, it included things like getting your food safe certification online, like all these things we just aggregated into one platform, but we spent over a year and a half and hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that. Um, and it was challenging, but it was rewarding for that company. But then the next thing came about, and then the next thing came about, and there was no way to maintain that. Yeah. It's not sustainable. And so we always looked for and dreamed of, hey, how could we just have this one platform that was fully owned and operated by one company Mm -hmm. that could do all the things that our industry needs. And changes and adapts to that. And, uh, yeah, and you don't have to worry about learning how <laughs> APIs work and how this works and how that works. You don't want to have to get into all that. You just yeah. want to be able to have a platform that you can rely on that helps you do what it takes to grow and manage your business. I agree, and I think, you know, you've got, I've talked to, obviously, a lot of different executives, c levels, CTOs, CEOs, et cetera, and I'm still, I'm puzzled because You've got a CTO who goes out there, spends 100%, buys a premium of everything. Mm -hmm. The best online ordering platform, the best right. POS, the best customer feedback, the best, the best, the best of all these different things. And then they turn around and they put that in the hands of a manager right. who all he cares about is, I just got to get this, my job done, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the tech guru sitting, the CTO sitting at, in the corporate office says, no, we have to have the best of that. And I think if you're a CEO of any, any 10 plus location unit, you need to challenge your CTO and say, look, you just went out there and spent all this money on this best of the breed application. And I undoubtedly, it's the best that's out there in the industry. Right. right. However, how much of it are we using? Right. You know, the 80-20 rule applies everywhere. 
even for us, that even applies. You know, we took right. this 80-20 rule and we said, look, we're just going to go build that 20% of functionality that every or 80% of users are going to use. Yet we then ended up back in that 80-20 rule. Mm -hmm. That 80% of our or 20% of our users are only using 80% of the functionality right. still. So right. I just don't think you can get around that. And then you've got, again, these C-level CIOs, CTOs making these decisions, overspending, and then mm -hmm. putting it in the hands of a server or manager who yeah. Yeah. just doesn't really, they don't even care about that functionality perhaps, yeah. right? Yeah. They're just, they're using, again, just that small set of feature set right. that enough to get by by their day, right? And it's like you go out there and you buy a Lamborghini and you give it to a student driver. Right. <laughs> Don't do that. Why would you do that? <laughs> you know? Um, so when you look at what's happening right now, out of nowhere, some VC money is raised and a new tech company comes out. Yep. Sometimes they're very special, very eye-opening. Oh, wow, didn't know you could do that. That's very interesting, you know? And people get a kick out of it. And after a couple of years or so, it starts to become a little mainstream. And sometimes those companies disappear. Sometimes they keep going. But they keep going and they go and they go. But they're doing the exact same thing. Yeah. But as an executive who has to make these decisions, I got real overwhelmed with having to deal with that. Because I know that if you do one thing, yeah, that means I am paying you a premium because you have to make that one thing work for you. Absolutely. If you have multiple channels of revenue, just like if you're on the uh, leadership management side, you want to have multiple channels of revenue. Sure. Right. You're, 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 you're balancing out the risk, right? You're having more streams of income. Well, same goes for uh, on the tech side. If you don't have multiple streams, you have to charge a certain price to maintain that. If you had more, you could probably charge a little bit less right. or you could be more competitive in the marketplace because you're not relying on one. And I think that's where this, the industry is broken right now. You walk this show, right? There's at least 20 people doing the exact same thing. I agree 100%. One exact same thing. Yeah. And some names I've never heard of. Some I have seen here every single year and yeah. good for them. But over time, people are going to become one more sophisticated about this mm -hmm. and more annoyed about the different management, the different costs. But if you, you know, if you go to somebody that has majority, if not all the things you need in one platform, one, it should be more affordable. Two, it's, it's all integrated. It's all one system. Anything you want to know about your team members is going to correlate down to their schedules, down to like, everything's just in one place instead of having to build integrations. Right. And instead of the mindset of, oh, yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, this new company came out yesterday. I'm going to go build the same thing and just do what they're doing. Yeah. The mindset should be, wait a minute, I have, let's say, one, two, three good products today. Why don't I just see what's actually happening in the industry, what is growing, and let me just add that to my stack. It should be going that direction, not the multiple creators of the exact same product with different logos. I agree. Right. And I think that makes life for, for the business owners more difficult. Again, I'm a business owner myself, and I had a major problem. In fact, I, I say that all the time that I remember the days and I remember the individual that I failed to fire who was costing me a ton of money. Yeah. But the alternative was train the next person. Took like probably five, six months to do because we had seven or eight different platforms running. And it's like right. for this, you go there. For that, you go there. For no, that, you go there. Different logins. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And then now I terminated that person and it's like how do i how much of my time it's going to take to train the next guy mm -hmm. and then even if it's not me now and it's my direct report that has to train that individual right i feel that pain because i had to do it sure and then you fail to terminate that you fail to remove their password and now they still have right. three years they later they still have it's just a mess right. even if you do figure out sso and all that, it just it never yeah. ever works right it's, yeah. it's a broken component in the industry and you just need that consolidation, right? And the same, look at the uh, franchising space real quick. What's happening? Everybody's being consolidated or being the consolidator. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening, right? All these brands are coming together because it's silly to keep having these individual operations just doing one thing, one brand. It's more financially sound and feasible and adds more valuation by bringing more together. Sure. And then, so let's talk about integration because, you know, I'm at war with, NCR because you know I know <laughs> I we, we normally yeah yeah who exactly yeah so well I think that's the reason restaurant industry as a whole failed to innovate 
Mm. Because they failed to give access to others. They, they didn't do what Apple did. They right. didn't say, here's the platform, it's open, go build your business on top of ours. Right. So we become more valuable and you make money and we do a profit share, right? right. They said, nope, won't give you access, run you around for years, or pay a 25,000 SDK uh, fee, or you know, go through a, a training for six to 10,000 bucks, and then pay you know, per month per location fee that doubled our price right. to the consumer. And it's like, why would you do that? So yeah. now I think, uh, now I look at it a different way. I think integrations are, are at some stages they have to work, but if you have these you know, 12 different vendors and one of them makes a change to their platform, like their POS company makes a change. Right. Now everybody else has to update or tomorrow morning you wake up and nothing's working. Right. Why? Because somebody screwed something up and failed to update the other one. So I think that's one big failure yeah. that I want to drill down on. And I think the second biggest failure is getting, uh, integrating and getting the right information. Because when you integrate, you can't integrate the entire platform of company A to company B. So you're only selectively integrating for what you're looking for. But now we were talking about AI. So what's going to happen with that AI? You feed it incomplete information, guess what you're going to get out? Exactly, yeah. It's not going to, yeah, it's not going to yeah. make up for the lack of information and spit something better out. Right, right. So uh, run me through that. What are your thoughts on these integration stuff? So two topics on that. I'll, I'll, so on integration themselves, I've never had one go well. I've never been like satisfied with what has happened because you get to a point where you spend, in some cases I remember paying like five grand for one, another 10 grand for the other, and sure there's some that haven't opened one and now you're just talking about labor and time. But either way, it, it's always cost and, and time for somebody somewhere. Mm -hmm. And every time we would do that, we'd then be sitting there saying, wait a minute, I thought we would have access to this. I thought we were gonna be able to bring all this information to create this report and whatever right. the information was. And it was always like, oh, no, no, that's a whole separate piece. And we're not able to do that. Or no, we have to now go over here. It's just, it was always so confusing. And for a guy who's not a tech guy, I don't want to hear all that. I just want to yeah. know that I can bring in my data yeah. and I can bring it together and have an auto report that tells me purchase history of my guests, right? Or whatever sure. I'm looking for. Uh, correlated to sales and performance and all these things. And it's just such a mess. I think about someone who's really inexperienced or trying to just grow their brand right now. They have 10, 15, 20 units and they're just trying to get more debt. It's going to be a nightmare and it's going to cost a lot of money. Sure. And so I just, I, again, I just feel like everything's so fragmented and it shouldn't be that hard and, and, and people shouldn't be trying to protect or close off their system for the people who are paying for it. Right. Sure. It needs to be open to try to help drive more revenue for them. Yeah. Um, and obviously it helps the, like, the tech company get more insight and data as well. But uh, I don't know. I just, I've never seen it be successful in at least the restaurant franchising industry. Yeah. Uh, There's always things that will go wrong in that space. And I think, <clears throat> obviously we built an all-in-one platform so I did it for myself to begin with because yeah. I was having those problems and I saw those problems go away and for us it was it was a critical point it's like do we do we focus on sales and keep growing and try to wing it or do we kind of put the brakes on get our back and figure that and then go back out and then we do that and I'm glad that we did that right uh, it was very time consuming it was very expensive obviously but I think hindsight, I would have, if I go back, I would do the exact same thing, but I would do it sooner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the nightmares that I had to deal with would have been right. eliminated. Right. And I think the next thing on the restaurant industry, you build these silos. Again, going back to that AI tool, you have to be able to, you have to start giving full access to this AI engines. Right. Because again, if you give it incomplete information, then it's going to give you incomplete results. Right. And that's going to be detrimental to your business. Right. So all in one platform, I think, has a unique advantage going forward. Right. Because, you know, we're, there are things in our system that we don't show the end user. Right. But the AI engine has access to it. Right. Because we're not training it on what you see, we're training it on our back end. Yeah. We're training it on a database. What is that? What is this? Right. And then it's gonna start correlating that. Right. And I I have a great example that I, I, that's kind of where our vision is and where we're going. So imagine a restaurant walks in, we know how long they waited in line. We know how long it took them to, uh, uh, for the server to take their drink order. Right. We know how long it took the server to, uh, 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 get their food order. Right. Now we know how long it took the kitchen to prep that meal and we know how long it took them to leave the restaurant. 
So imagine if you have an all-in-one platform with all of that data in there. Again, we're not displaying it anywhere on the sure. front end, so for the for the restaurant owner to see that, but you train that AI on that, it'll start flagging everything. So now instead of you being the auditor going through every single transaction trying to figure all that information out, it just tells you, hey, these are the problem areas. Right. And then going back but to labor, it's like, hey, you should forecast labor. This is how many people you need. Right. Right. Or prep for this because you're going to have a spike yeah. in sales or you're going to have a slow time. It's where things are going, right? Yeah. It's going to happen. It, and so one, one thing I'll say too on, on the you know, consumer side of the technology, when you have this one platform, this one partnership, and another one comes out and you keep going along like I talked about. I, imagine if you did just have, let's say, uh, one service with somebody that had all in one platform you're going to be in the same position. So if you look at the buying power or the negotiation power that you have, when you have one of all these individual platforms, you're just the same to everybody. Sure. There's nothing different about you or your yeah. brand to that vendor, to that supplier, because they have a bunch of those people. Sure. But if you go to all in one platform and now you're using two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, well, however many of their components of their individual modules and platform, mm -hmm. you are somebody to them. You have buying power, you have negotiation power, you have more to offer. But think about all those, those technologies you invest in today, all separately, you're paying top dollar for, you're still low on their priority list, most likely, right? Unless you came to them with 2,000 locations. Yeah, I so, challenge you a little bit on that one. Yeah. I, I agree. It should give you a lot more bargaining power, no questions asked. But I think, personally, I would say to the restaurateurs, if you go to an all-in-one platform, first question you should ask, how are you going to help me make more money? Right, right. I think that should be that should be the absolutely first and foremost important thing that you ask because I believe that the technology companies have got to shift. Right. It can't just be all about you, right? right. You, you talk to all these guys and all they care about is we're the industry leading POS system, we're the industry leading online ordering system. Right. Great for you. What is that going to do for me? Right. Good luck. I'm glad that you made several billion dollars selling me right, right. a platform that doesn't help me right. make three million dollars a year right. right and what i'm referring to is that i hear a lot of these operators say oh i, I signed up for this platform but i can't ever get anybody on the phone nobody yeah. answers my calls okay but you know buying power negotiation you know important i think that will be have, a huge difference you have eyes and the best part is as you start to scale away from some of these individuals you're just adding more and more to this you know all in one platform you're you're gaining more value for yourself as well and for your team and now it is making it more simple on the end user of this, you know, software. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So I just think it, it over time, it'll, it'll become a little more simple and people will get the support, the service, the access they actually need versus again, just trying to do it with 15 different companies. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it does, it makes it easier on your employees because it's kind of, you don't have to again, train them and retrain them on multiple systems, right. single user password, et cetera. Right. And the security. Uh, again, it, I think the all-in-one platforms. A lot of uh, a lot of the higher-end guys that I'm talking to. It, well, I say that, but you know, I've talked to a couple of people, big companies, CTOs, and they're like, "Nope, we're gonna have the best of breed on everything." Yeah. And then I'm talking to some other ones that are building their own all-in-one platform. Right. So actually, you mentioned building that out yourself. Why did you guys decide to build? Just because you couldn't find a solution out there? There was no solution back then, oh, right? Sure. And so we, we needed, so it came down to this. Operators, franchisees said, hey, I'm sick and tired of trying to log in all these platforms. Yeah. You just launched this new, you know, text to join program. You just launched this new um, reporting software. You just gave us e-learning. You're giving us all this stuff, right? Social media scraping. We have all these individual platforms. We're sick and tired of it. And so we wanted something that would just integrate it all in one and it was an app where we, they could just go in and all things for our brand would be right there in that app, from training to operating to running reports to ordering food. Everything was integrated. Now, it, to them, you know, to, you know, our conversation is most likely the best way to say is just a single sign-on yeah. that we spent a lot of money to bring everything together to do that. Got um, and it just it made it more simple to them, and that's how adoption went up. That's how engagement went up because now there's no excuse to, to literally – like operate this brand, you have to go to that app at least once a day. How, yeah. how else are you going to do the things you have to do? Yeah, because if right. your sales data is in there, your labor right. report is All in there, yeah. <laughs> everything else it was broken. It was broken. You know, six months in, we're learning, oh, wow, th this link's broken, or that that one's expired, or this is not, it's just, 
to manage that is ridiculous, right? Yeah. Same for people who try to build their own apps in house. I hear about that all the time, all the money spent by a brand on their own app or their own developers. Why? There's yeah. solutions out there that you can plug and play into. I think nowadays that's true because you could go out there and try to figure this out yourself yeah. or pay a premium, yeah. you know, but get the best of, best of that solution out there. Right. And I think one of the biggest challenges that we've had with this all-in-one platform we obviously we're having to constantly update it and get new things added and all these different things but i guess that's the disadvantage is that you're going to have to constantly keep up with that and you as a restaurant owner you may not be able to do that so i I would highly recommend finding a good company that you believe is going to be able to solve those problems and again start with top line sales don't focus on anything else that doesn't promise that that has um, convoluted, vague ROI, right, right? Right. If it doesn't directly impact and has some sort of a um, ROI that you could uh, attach yourself to, then don't worry about it. Right. right. And then, because they're going to do a better job at it. Oh, hopefully they will, right? Because right. they're constantly going to be innovating. They're going to be updating it. They're going to be doing all the things that they need to do on there to keep up with the industry and that will in turn benefit you. Right. 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 And you, you want to find a, a company that actually has some roots in the industry. Right? Yeah. It actually stays connected to the industry, not just a VC fund that just went live yeah. and they said they have the solution. Like, do they know the industry? Do they have people who are connected to the industry? How they live the day in the life? Like, that's going to help their product because that means their product is being made for the operators and the end user, not just this idea that they had, you know, in the garage. Yeah. And actually going back to that. So the advantage that we, the biggest advantage, like I was just thinking about that as you said that, Every time we want to cross a new challenge, we'll put a software solution in place. Right, right. And it has made us so much more effective. Like one prime example, the last one was our meeting notes. We were having trouble. We were having meetings, make decisions. Yeah. And it was just kind of fell fall by the wayside and we wouldn't be able to track that. So now we've built this incredible meeting notes thing in there that we put everything in there. Yeah. And then we go back to our meeting notes. Before we start the next meeting, we do that. And before I have a meeting with you, you have to send me the meeting agenda through the system and I get an email and it's like, these are the things I want to talk to you about. So see, that's brilliant because as an operator, right? If I, like, imagine if I just had like a POS system with with like an all-in-one platform like yours, right? Sure. If I just had a POS system and you launch that and you send me a notification, oh, wow, that's a whole other value add to me as a a consumer. Yeah. that will help me want to invest more into your brand because you you are adapting to the problems of the industry or the things that are happening to you personally in your company, but also that could help others. But to me, I just think that's the way you want to be. Even if I do only use 20%, let's say, of your platform, yeah. as you keep growing and growing and growing that platform, it's going to give me more reasons to want to keep purchasing sure. your product. And guess what? It's a hell of a lot easier because I don't have to go call somebody else. I, I don't have, have to go do another demo. Yeah. yeah, I just have to you know yeah. deal with the same person. I have one vendor. I have one person to manage this relationship with. I agree. And I think those, you know, I, and also to that other thing, like there are a couple of companies here, like best of breathing in their space. Yeah. But I feel like as they've grown, they've completely disconnected from the space. Right. So it's like, you guys don't do this now? It's right. like, no, we don't, because that's somebody else's job. It's like, well, yeah, but it needs to work together. So yeah. I think this all-in-one solution is going to change. And if for nothing else, for AI and marketing automation. Sure. Because I think the marketing automation and the AI tool will require that information. And if you don't have it, if it's segregated, if it's siloed among 10 different vendors, then good luck. Yeah, stay fragmented. Yep. It's going to, again, it'll go back to being that painful death because it's right. going to slowly... Um, again, incomplete data in, incomplete data out, and you're going to get stuck with that mediocre result and the competitors are just going to crush you because, again, that gap between really good companies and everybody else is going to be so big that there's no middle ground. Right, right, right. So great. Any other final notes before we end this? I I would just say you got to evaluate your business and just see where you are today. How many vendors do you have? How many people do you have on your team who are, you know, crunching manual data, right? How many people are trying to bring information from this system and the other system and doing all those spreadsheets? Like, what does the workflow look like today? And are there opportunities for efficiencies? And go look at some all-in-one platforms. Obviously, look at Milagro, but look at any ones that are out there and see how it can help your business because 
you're just wasting time and money. Yeah. And, and those resources you have today who are managing all this, most likely could be redeployed somewhere else that adds more value. Yeah, more efficiency across the board. Yeah. Right, right. All right, perfect. So this was our topic for today. We hope you enjoyed it and uh, tune in for the next topics. Thank you, guys. Here at Milagro, we've solved all of these complex problems of the loyalty and the integration and everything that we've discussed in this podcast. So if you're interested to learn more, contact us and schedule a demo.